Jesus. Okay, um, let's move into this uh, this yep. checklist then. The glove box checklist, I'm calling it. <laughs> oh, Jeanetta. It's all right. Don't Jeanetta's worry. seen it's somebody w- go past. Yeah, we, we, it's quite normal to have pets taking part in the show. Uh, certainly, it seems at the moment, or in the last few days. Um, so the glove box yep. check- checklist, where should we start yep. with that, Colin? Uh, basically, with the documents. Uh, okay, so what do we need? You, well, you need your full driving license, so th- that's the first most important thing. All right. Then pr- proof of ID, which obviously, if you're a if you're a citizen here, it's the uh, card you've got. Now, interestingly, it is a requirement by law whether you're in a vehicle or not to carry identification. I believe. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As it is, when you're walking dogs, you're supposed to be carrying the walk the dog that's license. What I mean. You're not just in the car. No. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So not you. So not just your own ID. Seriously. Your dog's ID as well. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, what about cats? Oh, cats that aren't registered. I think they should be. A, a dog have... has to be. Li- the dog has to be licensed at the local uh, Junta Frisier. Okay, and I think cats have got a chip as well because I was sent a massive passport no, from they, my cat. Oh, they've got chips, but that's. Uh, you know, they, they don't have licenses. They don't only have a chip so that uh, should they get run over or get lost, the the um, vets can find out who owns the 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 animal. Well, that's a new bit of information. You you should, by mm. law, have your dog's ID with you as well as your own. Yeah. That's quite, quite I, ne- I never have. <laughs> don't say that publicly. They're, well, they're, they're A4 size. I mean... You know. Do you not go out with a filing cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough going out I'm with just, Ginetta on a long right. lead. <laughs> I, I'm just walking my I'm just walking my filing cabinet. I think I'll take the dogs with me as well. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, so tr- where were we? Driving license. Right, ID. driving license, pr- proof of ID, um, insurance certificate for the vehicle. Yeah, okay. Now that's changed recently, hasn't it? Um there was a time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tell us you about used the to have to have it up. You used to have to ha- uh, show that on the windscreen. Yep. But now you only have to carry the certificate with you. Yeah, and that's how I got um, busted. Was I? I was stopped, and I and I, I thought I was I I was really quite you know pride comes before a fall. I thought I had yeah. a lovely wad of documents, but I mean, I, as it turns out, I knew this. I was going to get a fine one way or another. Anyway, it was a, it was a kind of um, revenue generation situation. I think. Um, and it was in the time where you had to carry two parts of your insurance, the little square that you cut out, which is very quaint and old-fashioned, yeah. isn't it? Where you, where you cut out the little yeah. square and you stuck it in the window, and the certificate as well, which was meant to be in the glove box. Um, and I only had the certificate on the window because I thought that's all you needed, and that got yeah. me an 80-euro 80, 80, uh, fine, and I was sent off to the cash machine to go and get the cash to do that because they didn't have their electronic machine working. So I had to pay for all the petrol to go to the cash machine mm. For the fine as well. And on the way, and, and we're talking about apps here. Thanks very much uh, for your input on this, Pam. I thought to myself, hold on a minute. I can show him a PDF on my phone of the document he's looking for. So, mm. I, I, again, pr- pride came before another fall because as I returned to get my wad of documents, which as I left with the police officer, said, Look, I'm leaving all these documents with you now. If I get stopped again, I haven't got my documents. And he laughed and said, I don't think that will be a problem or something like that. But I came back and I said, look, mm. I've got that document you're looking for as a PDF. He said, no, sorry, I've written a ticket now. So, you know, <laughs> that's that's yeah. behind us anyway, wasn't it? It was 200 euros if you didn't have it in the windscreen and 80 euros if you didn't have it in the glove box, yeah. the counterpart to it. But you only need the certificate in the car. You don't need anything on the windscreen now, do you? Well, I'm not sure about the IPO, um, the little square section for that. Uh, when you get your car MOT'd at the IPOs, yes, you need that. You, uh, a sheet. you need yeah. that on your windscreen if the car is over four years old. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that's not, a year. Not, year. So if your car is younger than four years old, you don't. It's not required. No. No. The, you you don't get you don't get tested here until the car is four years old, and then it's every two years until I think it gets about. Oof, I can't remember. What, what age, six years or eight years or something, and then it's every year. Yep. Okay, very good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, then you need pay, 
from paperwork wise, that's probably it, except that I carry a lot with the insurance certificates. I carry a, a accident report paperwork. Yeah. Because my insurance, my insurer provides that. Yes. Um, which is a good idea. But the other thing that people may not be aware of is should you have an accident, uh, you do not move the car, regardless of whether you are blocking the road yeah. or not. Okay. Yep. You must not move the vehicle. The reason for that is that the insurance companies want you to get the police report so that they can argue out whose fault it is. Yep. Okay. Whilst everybody else in the city is waiting behind you. Yeah. Um, yeah. They can't get past. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, so, this in, you know, it's worse in Lisbon. Because so, uh, often, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it's... Road, people go around people, can't you? But I've seen, I've seen gridlock occur because yeah. people cannot move their vehicles until the police have arrived. Yeah, but I mean, the most common thing here is uh, bumps at roundabouts. You know, people going into the back of somebody as they're about to go off round the roundabout, and some idiots coming too fast the other way, and they have to slam their anchors on, and somebody's right in the backside of them. Yep. Um, yep. And and that sort of accident is very common here. Um, if it's on a single lane, then you know that that blocks the road. But, That's um, yeah. Hopefully, you've brought. But the book. insurance company, but the insurance company want you to to actually um, bring the police yep. and get that report. And the paperwork you just mentioned there often comes with your insurance papers, doesn't it? It's like a little official it does. booklet for recording. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I would fill even if you call in the police, I would fill that in yourself. So that you've got an accurate and uh, an accurate report, because you never know who the you know who you bumped into, do you? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Literally. Um, cats yeah. are also registered. Don't know if you have to carry it when you take them for a walk. If that's should you be taking your cat for a walk, as people do. I've seen people taking parrots and rabbits for walks in Portugal. So it is it is yeah. possible here. Oh, no, our, our cat Dino regularly comes walking with the two dogs. Yeah, we've got a cat. Well, we, he's missing at the moment. We we have a cat who who used to love walking with the dogs. Um, mm. The convertible here in Portugal is decapitated by the sound of it. Descapotável. <laughs> A decapitated car is the convertible. Thank you for D much for being here yeah. and sharing that information with us. Pam's chipping in with the matricula for the vehicle. Now there is um a card, isn't there, which shows the vehicle registration as well. So it may be worth carrying that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the registration document has to be there. Okay. Uh, and it is a it's a paper. Yep. These days it's it's just a, a very small A3, is it, or something they call it, or the very small. Oh, I think I've got a plastic long. card as well for mine. But anyway, okay. Oh, well, the, right, the okay. matriculation document, yeah. the actual registration of the vehicle itself, like your logbook, yeah. you would have called it. Yeah, yeah, company. your logbook, yeah. You yeah, need yeah. that. Okay. okay, then uh, as we were talking about accidents, uh, should you have an accident or need to get out for a punch or, or anything, you have to wear reflective jackets. Uh, they have to be the approved ones which you'll oh, find out when you what? go to the IPO. Okay. Well, you can buy reflective jackets anywhere, probably at the Chinese or something, but uh, they, they need to be the proper okay. high-vis reflective jackets. They need to be the correct ones. Okay. Um, and the, what, as in a, the right colour, the right, the, the, the right yeah. colour and the reflectivity. Okay. Uh, well, they have to have a, a site. Uh, is it the CE on them or something? Okay. All right. So the official high vis. Yeah. Do, would you do you recommend yeah. one for each passenger, or is it just the the, the driver that? For, well, I I always carry two. Okay. Just in case. Right. And then you need um, a warning triangle, which can be placed a sensible distance from the car to warn yeah. people that uh, that either the car is um, in an accident or uh, you you have a flat tire or something. Yep. Okay. Uh, you're also meant to carry a full set of replacement bulbs. Yep. This is one of the things you learn about, isn't it? When you, when you grow up in the UK and you want to drive in Europe, you you get this list, mm -hmm. don't you? Of things, and that's that's always been a surprise to me, as well as having the little stickers to change the light path on the headlamps. Yeah. yeah a yeah. set of a yeah. set of replacement bulbs. Okay, or lamps. Okay. Yep. 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 
All right. And, and uh, these are the, these are the things that you can get fined for, aren't they? So it's like a it's like running the gauntlet, isn't it, of all of these things. And and I've heard of um, um, police officers. You know, if you uh, if you get out of the car to talk to them, you don't wear your high vis. Well, there you go. There's a fine right there. Yeah. Well, you know, they they seem to be on uh, some sort of incentive to uh, <laughs> right, okay. allegedly pay for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, and then. One interesting fact is if you're on a motorway or an IP or an IC road, which are the main trunk roads, every two kilometers there are phones to connect you to the SOS people. Right. So, okay, you true. know, that's a useful, yeah. a useful tip. And uh, I think it, really. as, as, as is becoming standard practice around the world, um, get out of your vehicle if you possibly can. Don't sit in your vehicle on a busy road or no. a motorway. No. Get off and get on the other side of the barrier uh, in, into safety, yeah. right? Abs absolutely. I mean, there was a very sad uh, incident in, uh, on the M6 um, where a, a truck driver who uh, <clears throat> is, a, is of a... Uh, nationality that uh, we know very well. Oh right, yes, of course, yeah, yeah. He uh, he was driving along using his laptop, and there was a family of five yes. from uh, Conway uh, right. on the hard shoulder waiting for somebody to come and help them, yes. and the vehicle ploughed into them, and killed all five. Horrific, horrific. Okay, so get out the vehicle. Yeah. Make sure you get out of the vehicle. Don't stay in the vehicle if you're uh, if you're Absolutely. broken down on the hard shoulder. Even though you're on the hard shoulder, mm -hmm. it's not safe enough. You need to get on the mm -hmm. other side of the barrier. And for that matter, and on that note, I mean, it's worth having blankets, isn't it, in the in the vehicle and an extra coat uh, if it's at night and, it, and it's chilly sometimes. I think so. Even in Portugal, yeah. So yeah. think about that. Yeah. Plan ahead with that. And thank you for that list um, as well. So we've got that, and we'll pop that up in the Portugal Club. We've also got the yeah. app here that uh, we has been sent to us kindly by Pam. This is for Portugal, id.gov.pt. If you want to just give up and give all your details to the government and maybe the Chinese government at the same time, um, just get that app and digitize everything. You know, if, you, if you're just fed up with it, or it's like, well, I don't know. I give in. I will just submit all of my personal data to whoever who needs it. There's the app for doing so, um, possibly. Uh, there. Anyone got any, any um, uh, experience of doing so? Do let me know. Pam, it's being very helpful this morning. Thanks, Pam. Well, you normally are, but especially so this morning. You have to carry enough high vis jackets for the number of occupants in the vehicle, uh, which could be quite a mm. lot if you have an SUV and a seven seater. Dash cams, mm. the. Gray area. Thanks, Paul, for being here. Good to see yeah. you this morning. What do you make of the dash cam situation? It's a bit of a, a gray area, isn't uh, it? Well, I believe it's illegal to have them in uh, in Portugal. They do right. not like it at all. Yeah. Okay. So you know, you you would got you would get fined if you add uh, one that's should... not a, not a manufacturer's built in dash cam, for example. Well, they don't have them, do they? Manufacturers don't don't have dash cams. Oh, by dash they cam, what, like half. a Leslie, a GoPro or something like that. That's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. what about? I mean, what if, if it's a surveillance issue? Presumably, the Portuguese government authorities are not too happy about all the many cameras that a Tesla has on it, for example. But there's not a lot you can do about it. Well, again, those are for automated driving rather than for uh, recording what's happening. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, no, it is not illegal. Um, it is why you what you do with the footage, I'm guessing, Nick. Okay, so you can have no, it. It is, it, I'm sorry, Paul, but it is illegal. Okay, all right, let's just sort this out in the you, pub car park, you two. Yeah, okay, um, all right, um, and it's on an official government app for storing documents issued in docu in Portugal, not shared with anyone, secure and legally recognized. Fair enough. Um, and uh, yes, be careful, says Dimash. Be careful when stopping your car on the side of the road, especially if it's raining. Always choose to turn on all four indicators and get out of the car without hesitation. Thanks, Dimash, for that. Tesla can record, uh, they use it for security mode. And while he's here, 
He's saying, why don't we have Monday as a public holiday? Can't help you with that this morning, Darren. Uh, Honda E has built-in cameras as well. So, yeah, I think, uh, Colin, you were making a distinction between leisure cameras, GoPros and dash cams and built-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, I mean, no, those, are there, those are there for helping with uh, autonomous driving uh, yes. rather than record, recording what's actually physically happening. All right, fantastic. Be prepared to make an emergency stop in the middle of a town while someone has a chat with a friend. <laughs> Don't get twisted. When you see people parked on roundabout islands, it's quite common. Thank you for your yep. added commentary there, Gary. Absolutely spot on, isn't he? And seriously, yeah. you know, this is... A, oh, always. Interesting point here. I think I might have tried the parking on the roundabout thing once, but it just felt so uncomfortable I didn't do it anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. No. no, and stopping in the middle of the road. Now, I think this is based mm. on this is the Portuguese cultural matter. If you are in front, mm. the road, the pavement, the government office, the bank queue, the yeah. supermarket belongs yeah. to you. Would you agree? Yeah. Colin? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. not about thinking I mean, about who's behind you. If it's your turn, it's your turn, and you can do what you want with your turn. Driving in Portugal is a case of uh, expect the unexpected. Yeah, well said. And then, you, then you'll be safe. Yeah. Um, don't come to a roundabout and think that because there's uh, cars coming and you're you're uh, you're on their left, which is you always have to give way to the left, that they're going to not enter the roundabout at speed because. Yeah numerous times they don't even look they just enter you know that it's their their territory and they're yeah. having it and that that's it yep uh, there's a t-junction in my town which where you would think it's, it's it's the marginal it's the beachfront road and you would think mm -hmm. okay this is my road this is my road um here and people stop to let the traffic in from the left on the t-junction um which i think is quite unusual and and causes some well, you have to it, yeah but yeah, it's, you have it's, to give way to, it's, it's to a left. continuous road um, rather than, you know, which I mm. would, would have thought you stay, you have right of way because you're on a continuous road. There are no road markings. Well, you should have. You should have, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, so, so approach with hesitation, I think, is the point being made here, isn't it? Yeah. Don't expect the unexpected. I, mean, I had an experience last, uh, last week where I was driving up to the Toyota garage to just yeah. confirm that the things that we're doing today. And... Um, I was driving north or on the, the, so the Toyota garage was on my left on the other yeah. side of the road. And I turned in and uh, Rui said, Colin, you can't do that. That's 250 euro fine. Really? You should and have I gone said, to the roundabout and turned around. Hang on. Yeah, you should go to the roundabout and turn around. He said, it's very dangerous to, to cross, a, except that it's really near a roundabout. Nobody should be going that fast. And, yes. uh, he said, no, you're not allowed to do that. And I looked at the road, and there's no road markings, mm -hmm. nothing at all. So how, how do you know? But that's no defense, apparently, here. Well, oh, thank you. No, you're right. If there are no road markings, that doesn't mean you're not going to get fined. Our, our, our mutual no, friend, Jerry, exactly. Portugal, crossed the line, um, and he was stopped. Uh, and he said, but there's no, there are no lines there. And, he, and the police officer said, well, there used to be. Um, and uh, yeah, exactly. They used you, to be, yeah, yeah, you exactly. crossed where there would have been lines. So that's a really great mm -hmm. point and something to remember. Yeah, instead of crossing mm -hmm. the path of incoming of oncoming traffic, yeah. go to the next mm -hmm. roundabout, make the turn, do a yeah. U turn, and turn yeah. right yeah, yeah. as you're as you're proceeding. Very good. Yeah, yeah. We we have to accept we're not in the UK or America where you know you'd get away with that because there are no road markings. There's nothing to tell you you can't do it. But here, you know. They all know that you can't do it because there used to be road markings. That's right. We're not in Kansas anymore. We're not in Kansas anymore. No. Okay. No. So just no. a couple of things then. Uh, Richard's just joined us, so we'll chat with Rich in about a minute. Um, so it's the purpose of the camera that's relevant. That I think that makes some yeah. sense there, Darren. Yeah. Um, driving anywhere, you should expect the unexpected. I find the standard of driving here generally better than the UK, says Pam. Certainly more enjoyable 
Yes. I'm not sure Colin agrees with you there. Uh, in, two, in two and a half years, I've never encountered someone stopped in the middle of a road. You've missed out mm. uh, having a conversation. Guess I'm just lucky. And in the US, it's <laughs> offensive driving. And it's not so <laughs> I think if you're on a bike, if you're a pedestrian, if you're driving, assume that everyone else wants to kill you on the road. It's not a bad um, position to take. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's also in the US. Just guessing what's happening on the road. Yes. And if there's not a broken line on the road, you can't cross. That's true. And even if there is a broken line, you might want to just drive up and U-turn and come back on the right side there. Uh, to be honest, in that particular instance, there are broken lines. And you but still shouldn't do it. It's only, it's only because that they're faded so much. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, so maybe take a defensive uh, approach there. Last comment for the time being from Gary. Parking on the other side of the road facing in the wrong direction could also get your collar felt, which is a nice British yeah, euphemism yeah. for a tasty little it fine is. there. So there you go. Yeah, make sure you're parked it, 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 in the right direction. It's even illegal uh, to do that during daylight. Wow. Okay. That's interesting, isn't it? And only park on the pavement where you're you're indicated to do so. <laughs> right. There's a man in there's a man in dark glasses on a building site wanting to join us. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Whoa! Hey, morning, good morning. Richard. Good How morning. Are you? What's going How on in you? the Prohibition Bar? Yeah, that's How me. Yeah, it is him behind the glasses there, isn't he? Looking all rock and roll. I'll take him yeah. off. So I'll do that no, 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 you're all right. You're all right. I like it. I'm, just good... stare, I'm staring into the sun where I am, so it's better if I've got oh. the glasses on, if that's all right with you. It's absolutely fine because, um, no disrespect, we're actually interested in what's going on behind you um, yeah. this morning. It's, um, I imagine, quite a busy energetic atmosphere as you make the final preparations for the opening of the the grand opening who doesn't like a grand opening of the prohibition bar in obidosh there how's it going richard um it was pretty manic yesterday i have to say um <laughs> probably the sort of best and worst days all rolled into one we had uh, all of the kitchen equipment uh, arrived and was installed or is nearly installed uh, we obviously had all the electric works ongoing, which is still not finished. Um, we've got um, the new fridge went in, the new glass doors have started to be installed. Um, the builders here doing a lot of the work on the outside extension area. So mm -hmm. it, it was really it was really all go. It's a lot calmer today. There are other things still going on today, pretty much a continuation of yesterday. But we're today is the big day where we're clearing out the bar area completely, cleaning, touching up, and then tomorrow we'll be installing all the chairs and tables, and hopefully drinks will start to arrive. But Ooh. sadly, um, as we've posted out on uh, on Facebook and Instagram and other places, social media platforms, um, the weather's going to beat us. It's not going to be anything else that's going to be the weather. So yeah. we've taken the very difficult sad decision to postpone the opening for a week and actually create what we're calling the big weekender opening so Sounds we're now great. not going to open on good friday and that and that's it's big news so thanks for giving me the opportunity to to say this on the show as well because i know a lot of people listen and yeah. watch so uh we won't be opening good friday this friday um because the weather forecast is just atrocious Okay. And we just think the place deserves more. The effort that's yes. been put in in such an incredibly short space of time, I think it really does deserve better. So we've got to hope that next weekend, it may not be, and if it isn't, we will be going ahead next week no matter what. Um, okay. Yeah, but the idea will be fifth um, will be a sort of dress to impress cocktail party opening day. And, two, then, two. and then on the Saturday... We're going to open the restaurant um, as normal and encourage people to book and come and eat with us um, for our reduced menu at the moment. And then on Saturday's the big day, we've, in conjunction with Communities Unite, we're going to have a, um, um, you know, the normal, the, the stage will be in use for the first time formally. We're going to have a touristeria for 200 people and yes. um, including Four Horsemen are playing my band, Wine of Billy Roll is ahead in the bill and Chakra Shakers. Oh, oh yeah, back. really happy about um, all of that. Just yeah. a shame it couldn't be this weekend. 
Yeah, no, I totally understand that. So it was going to be a Good Friday opening. It's now going to be, instead of Holy Week, it's probably going to be Unholy Week at the Prohibition uh, Bar and the big opening. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, we can hear you now, I've lost you. Oh, okay. I've lost you completely. Oh, okay. Um, I think what we'll do is try and rejoin us. I'm going to send you a message via WhatsApp there. Can you hear us again now, Rich? No, I, I, it would appear not. So I'm going to say, I'm going to just send Rich a message because I want to find out more. The The way in which they've done this is very impressive, isn't it, Colin? It's a it's like a crowdfunding Certainly is. in the spirit yeah. of Communities yeah. Unite. What's impressed you about that so far? Well, the fact that they're all there, you know, uh, seven days a week yeah. doing DIY to get it going. And, yes. You yeah. know, that's real commitment. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Can you hear us now, Rich? No, he can't. Okay, so I'm going to boot him off uh, unceremoniously and um, have him have him join us again um, via um, the link that I sent him earlier on. Hopefully, he can join us again uh, in a couple of minutes because it's a great backstory to the Prohibition Bar. It was the Rex Bar that some people know from that's been there a few years um, that Simon Gotto uh, used to run in Obidosh, and now it's been expanded and evolved into the Prohibition Bar, community funded, community supported. And with the spirit of Communities Unite, Barack saying, Allah bon dia from Travanza. Us Texans drive like we're part of a Mad Max movie. You've got the roads for it. You've got the roads for it over there, Barack. Good to see you this morning. Rich, can you hear us now? Yeah, got you back now, right. Carl. Wonderful. We, we, were, we were talking about the um, community spirit. Um, it's obviously, it, it is in the spirit of Communities Unite. And we love what you've done with Communities Unite. Now you've got your own place here at the Prohibition Bar. Can you tell us a bit, you know, how the funding model worked, how the community involvement is working? Um, that's just been staggering, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, as you know, we've got 71 um, people that have actually invested in the bar. And wow. of course, that's, that 71 is actually over 100 because a lot of those are couples, partners. Yeah. Um, and so in reality, I think it's about 118 people. Um, and I've got to say, the response we have had here working, as I'm talking to you, the, there are people arriving here to actually work again today for nothing. Um, and and they've all the been... The response we have had here oh, working... What's happening there? We're hearing you twice now, Rich. There are people around... I can't hear him, so I had to put it on oh, okay. uh, okay, Carry on, Rich. Well, let's, let's yeah, work sorry, on I think Colin, Colin's got me on loud, so I'm coming through with the time delay. Um, oh, I see. Okay, fair so, enough. So, yes, it's, um, it's been absolutely moving, to be honest with you. The... Yeah amount of time people have given and it really is in the sense of community and, and i think that this has all started with community and it would be it would be really lovely to actually for that for the sunday next weekend yeah. to be beautiful weather and actually l launch this thing properly with the prohibition bar and communities unite because what what could be better to be honest with you that would really represent the whole portuguese spirit the expat yeah. community getting together and i'm just keeping my fingers crossed that the weather will be okay all right and that that so it's there's going to be the cocktail reception on the friday the 5th uh, yeah. like a restaurant service on saturday the 6th and the big party the, the barbecue in a communities unite style on sunday the 7th is that right that, that is absolutely yeah. right yeah that's right. it and it's worth so, traveling for i would say if you you know come up from lisbon travel from other parts of the country um it's going to be it's going to be a joyous event i think um and you're very keen within the the whole spirit of communities unite to have portuguese community join you you've got portuguese prices i think that's been very important to you isn't it and to not become a, an expat kind of separate thing this is very much about the, the spirit of integration that you have pioneered basically with communities unite yeah I, I think um touching on the point about the portuguese it's absolutely crucial to all of us here to yeah. make this place inclusive for everybody we don't want this to become a um i suppose a dedicated expat uh, bar we yeah. want this bar to be for everybody and we've got you know there's the different zones in, in the bar now is quite um, remarkable in terms of the bar area is the speakeasy where you can come in, but you can drink lager from, you know, under three euros a pint. Woo um, in um, the coffee's are still only going to be 80 euro cents. You know, that that's, that's what we want. But equally, you can have a vodka martini in there as well. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's really going to provide that. The outside space is going to be way more music related, 
um, lots of wood, beautiful stained wood, wooden tables, and then outside in the in the garden. Right, the now, outside space is going to be it's wet. um it's really looking quite impressive now, and the stage is finished. So it's it's really good. I can maybe try and show you actually. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Give, Let's give you full screen. Have a yeah, the time. rotation on this doesn't work. So what I'll do is I'll bin that round. So I don't know if you can Ooh, see that. What a bit. lovely! That's a proper pub garden. Fantastic. That, that's exactly what, and that's the view. It's not bad, is it? What you've got the Overdosh um, uh, aqueduct, isn't it? In the in the distance there. Yeah, and, and this this is the internal room now. This is brilliant. So this is all being panelled out and finished today, believe it or not. But it will be. <laughs> it will be. I've, oh, I've got no. to give a a massive shout out for our builder Norberto because he is without him we would not be here now. We really wouldn't. We would probably right. not be opening until June. Borto. Very good. And then I, I don't know, have you, is it oh, uh, contrasting okay through. for inside? Look, yeah, okay. okay, this is fantastic. Look at this. So in here, there's our super large, huge beer fridge and drink fridge down the bottom. Excellent. Yeah. Our bar is in under here somewhere. There it is, look. It's there. And then we've got it. the actual back bar is in now. And this is all being cleaned out and cleaned today. Capping's got to go on the electrics. And then we've got this huge commercial kitchen now upstairs. He's Amazing. still picking that up all right. Yeah, good. Yeah, we got you. There we go. Look at this. With a new skylight. Yeah, I know. Terrific. And, and, and when you think how long this has taken, um, it really just I still find it unbelievable. It's and amazing. again, new effort, thing. collaboration, isn't this wonderful? Power of community. Yeah, well, that's the whole point. Look, there's Sean. Say hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. Sean Morning. going up, up, up the ladder already. Look, another, yeah. another one of our investor volunteers. Yeah. We've got the ever-present Barry out there who's here every single Morning, day. Barry. Yeah. Um, you see, it's it's just, that's how it is. Um, I and we've cannot got wait 12 to get people coming and today. walk out into that garden. That, it looks fantastic. What's the, tell us about the menu, if you will, then, Rich, as well. Yes, uh, certainly. We've got, um, it's going to be based on a petit gosh menu um, with, with, with a twist. So there's going to be this, the sort of stables that you expect, um, but we're going to put a little twist on those. And to find that out, you've got to come and try the food, of course. But that there'll be, um, there's going to be a meat dish of the week, a fish uh, dish of the week, a pasta dish of the week, and that'll be changed, obviously, weekly. Um, we're going to have a whole, the petition cost listing will come down to about 13, 14 items. Cool. Um, we're then going to have a lovely dessert menu as well, but very simple. And then we've got a really nice wine list, all from local producers. Beers produced locally on tap. We're even going to have Bishop's Finger on tap. Um, Don't worry, and, everybody. Uh, that is also, uh, a name of beer. That's not a body part. Yes, it uh, isn't. Uh, no, it isn't. Well, it, could, it probably is a body part that Collins had something to do with in the past. I'm not sure. <laughs> but allegedly. Yes, guilty as charged. Look, he's re he's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we've got our own prohibition ale, which is an an English ale, uh, lower carbonation. Um, that's going to be on tap as well, as well as Guinness. And that's your that's our man James, isn't it? At Lorinha, who's who's that's brewing correct. J James Ansom is uh, been really helpful. We've also got Bordallo beers by the bottle, and they'll yeah. be guesting on tap. We've got Netush locally as well. We've got Malika Joao from Malika. Oh Everybody locally. Our, our meat is sourced locally. Our vegetables are sourced locally. Um, we, we, the providence to us is very very important. Mm. and to support local small suppliers. That's what we're trying to champion at the moment. Incredible. This is wonderful. And music, of course. Uh, we came yeah. up with a strap line for the Prohibition Bar where the music is louder than your knees, um, aimed at a particular demographic there. Um, what's what's going to be on the musical uh, menu? Um, all sorts. We're going to have um, a regular jam session. Um, that's going to be on hopefully bi-weekly. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a regular jazz session. We're going to run a karaoke. We're going to run a night of original music, which which has to be original compositions from uh, original artists. And then we're going to have the, the, the covers night, a rock night, a rock and roll night, a swing night. The, the, the music is going to be really important here. And um, and with the stage, as you've seen, it's, that's a you know that's a pretty big stage now. So we intend to get the use out of it. But we'll also have an internal stage in the outside building, 
um, which will be for the smaller acoustic sets and jazz nights and things like that. Wonderful. Sounds fantastic, says Brian Randy. Absolutely agree with him. Um, but is anything vegetarian on the menu uh, for Pam? Yeah, oh, ab absolutely. There, there's a number of vegetarian options on the menu. Um, we're running a, a reduced menu generally because, again, nothing to do with us. We need a three-phase power supply put it in and uh, EDP and e -reddish. Um They've actually been very helpful, but unfortunately, we're just in a queue. Yeah, um, and so until, until we get that, um, if we try and work everything, everything would be tripping out. So, um, to look forward to there then an expanded menu. Yeah, I mean course. that that you know, but we'll manage. We we've, we've yeah, got, you know, we'll manage and we'll get by. But we'll uh, it's all things to change and alter over the next two three weeks. Superb. Okay, last last uh, comment then, which I think is a really important one. Interesting. The prohibition bar is fully inclusive, so in reality, it prohibits no one. That's the spirit of Communities Unite. Everyone welcome, and that'll be a special event on the fifth. Um, the the uh, then you can eat the lim from the limited menu that Rich is talking about on the Saturday. But I think the big public do is going to be Sunday the seventh. Is that right, Rich? Yeah, I would aim if if, if you're thinking of a, a proper sort of big event opening, the yeah. the whole weekend will culminate and peak on the Sunday. So uh, get your bishop's fingers ready on the Sunday. <laughs> Colin can't wait. Is he allowed to wear his tutu? Can we bring our tutus that we're wearing to the netball? For that yeah, I have my my wife plays netball, as you know, she's treasure. And I spoke to her this morning. She did inform me and she asked me, Do you think Carl would fit my dress? To which I absolutely replied, Yes, as long as you're not in it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yes. So, yeah. so Colin yeah, was talking about this sort got, of thing earlier. You've, really? got suitable, you've got suitable clothing to wear today, I can promise you I better you get my green flash cleaned as well then. All right. That's fantastic, <laughs> Rich. I'm so pleased for you. And please send our best wishes to everybody because it is a massive team effort there. It's Thank such you. A, it's such a good model for how you've done it, the involvement. You know, you're making sure people are going to be involved because they're going to be proud of their, their place, aren't they, that they've invested in. in and I think, I think, Carl, just in, in finishing, and thank you for giving us the time, just two points. One... Um, a thanks to everybody for their support, because they're, they're, honestly, without it, I really don't know what we would have done. And there's been people come and help us who are not even invested in the bar. Wonderful. They've just come to help because they want to help. And that is a range of 12 nationalities we've had here. See you know, that. and lots of Portuguese too. We've got a Portuguese that's actually sitting on the on the management team as well, which is which is fantastic. It is. But also, please do, please, please, whenever we put anything out about the opening, because we previously obviously aimed for the 29th Good Friday, please yep. do spread the word that the it Good is. Friday is not opening. We will be here yeah. <laughs> because we'll be doing other things. But but please spread the word that the opening weekend is 5th, 6th, 7th of April. Superb. So God bless and good luck to uh, the Prohibition Bar and all who sail in here and have fun there uh, in the coming days, weeks, months and years, of course. Good one. Uh, excellent. Awesome. This morning, Richard. All the best. And I'll see you on thank that you. Sunday. Take care. Yeah, bye for thank now. you. Look forward Bye, to mate. It. Cheers. Love Thanks. to see you there. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now. Bye, bye. Colin, wow. Isn't that amazing? Let's unmute you so that you can actually comment on this. There yeah. you go. Isn't that amazing? Unbelievable. I mean, yeah. uh, the spirit that he's created within Portugal is just unbelievable. Communities you know? Unite. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. We've got a few minutes left. I suspect I will see you there on that Sunday. That sounds like the right day for us to go. That'll be Sunday. We'll be there. The 7th, we'll be there. The 7th of I, I'm, actually, I'm actually at the book exchange in the morning, so I'll just stay there. The book exchange? I didn't know you could yes. read. What's, what's that about? uh well it's quite interesting for somebody who doesn't read books that people come in and ask me that you know what what that this author's like and i said oh fantastic oh, you'll really oh, enjoy it rascal. take as many as you like it's one of my favorites <laughs> yeah and, and this, is, this is a community book exchange up in the castle isn't it is that right yeah i think um today we may have time to just park outside and do a photograph because they need the promotion Okay. All right. It's a, free books for everybody. All they have to do is give a donation to either the Kitten Connection or Crapper, which is the terrible name of the dog Stop rescue laughing. place. Kitten yeah. Connection. I'm sure I've Kitten seen that. Kitten Connection. 
the kitten connection is uh run by some expats in um in uh Peniche. yeah and uh they've been very good with liz helping her c- uh catch the feral cats here so that we can mute them all i've seen that so you there are feral cats up yeah. above the castle there aren't there they, yeah. they get caught yeah. they get fed caught and neutered okay fair enough yeah and last weekend they were they were doing a a course on how to how to catch them and how you know really it's called newton release so okay all right fantastic uh, one cat one cat can be responsible for five thousand cats wow some people are that's, like that that's, that's how yeah well yeah yeah um okay uh, so the book exchange this is free books and you just give a donation and you can yep. find them at the obidosh castle maybe we'll have a photograph exactly. of that they, they, they have foreign books there as well they have uh dutch german spanish um swedish books uh they have kids portuguese they have a load of portuguese books and kids portuguese books which will be helpful for people who want to learn the language yes very good point swedish books that and used to be something very different when swedish i swedish books yeah yeah yeah, yeah. excellent uh, you're, but, you're a volunteer but mainly it mainly it's english books with you know they have thousands of english books thousands and thousands okay all right um talking of learning portuguese how's your portuguese going i'm asking everybody this i'm not singling you out are you up for this colin are you up for talking a bit more look he's hanging his head in shame there li- actually literally right there are you up for uh, uh, for a learning and speaking a bit more portuguese this year uh y- yes yes, yes. Good man. Uh, Hoo-ah. Hoo-ah. yes i just find it very 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 difficult Tell me why. Why is this? You know, I need to know well, about this. this is what we need I to would, know. When I was sat in my uh, in my uh, grammar school in a place called Mould in North Wales, and Literally they started trying Mold. to teach me, yeah. they tried to teach me German. I thought, well, I, I live in Wales. Yes. What on earth do I want to learn German for? Give me yeah. maths, Fair physics, point. sciences. Yeah. I love it languages and it stayed with me i'm afraid right you know, I, so I, i've only i've only learned you, you're my I, i've only word learned word. english prob not properly anyhow that's right and i understand it's very difficult for a welsh person to do that so congratulations on that and we're going to take you a stage further i think you are my worst nightmare and my and my yeah. best friend in this in this task <laughs> of encouraging people to speak more portuguese you are my test case Colin, and I'm looking yep. forward to hanging out uh, with you later on today. We've got quite a few yep. adventures ahead of us, I think. We have pictures from Michael Barton, who has been, look, Philomena on the right there, a wonderful trip to the Schist Villages, um, where we went. We, you were on that trip, weren't you, Colin? Yep. Um, I was. I was. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, Michael, for that. And this is the meme you sent us as well. I always feel the need to check yep. to make sure my garage is locked at night before going to bed because I don't want someone stealing all the stuff we've been trying to get rid of for years. That's a true story, isn't it? That that came from uh, Caroline's husband. Very good. And other pitfalls of modern life. Public service announcement. Don't ever let your printer know that you've waited until the last minute to print something out and you're in a hurry because they can sense fear. Printers can sense fear. I've got, <laughs> I've got two printers now, which are nothing more than big paperweights in my office. They don't work. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. Every time you buy a new printer these days, you can't, You have to register, don't you, and give a DNA swab every time you want to print something. Oh, it's ridiculous. Crazy. And the cost crazy. of the car. So it's, uh, that's a yeah. good reason to go digital. I've got a little bit of an announcement, and I'd like your opinion on this. Somebody in our community wants to sell this vehicle, um, surplus to their requirements. Uh, you might have a view on this. This is a, a 2022 Citroen A, a C3, I beg your pardon, Air Cross, uh, mm-hmm. bought from you, Citroen dealer in Lisbon, about 23,000 kilometers on the clock. Clicks on the clock there, automatic, very good condition. Oh, that would be of interest to an American, wouldn't it, with its auto um, transmission there. Yeah. Always stored undercover. Great car for the wee village streets in Portugal. Probably worth around 18K. I think they'll take a little bit less than that. What would you say about that vehicle? <coughs> Like all Citroens, they uh, they drive like big cars. So for an American who's used to a big, comfortable car, you can't go anything better than the Citroen because the, their suspensions are world-renowned on comfort. 
Okay. All right. There you go. It sounds mm-hmm. like a good deal and a nice car if you're looking. And this is something we'll be covering. I mean, this is what we're trying to do more generally, isn't it? Is make it easy yeah, for yeah. people to buy cars because some people find it a little yep. bit difficult here in Portugal. Absolutely. All right. We're coming up to 10 o'clock. Last word to you, Mr. Colin Ross Jones. I'll see you later on. What would you like to say to everybody before we go? I'll give you a quick, another look at my porky pudding there. Uh, what else, what do you have to say as a parting shot for our friends this morning? Well, this is going to be a monthly event and uh, we would like to have some questions in advance so uh, we can fill the airtime more beneficial for you. Yep. Um, I'm trying to find uh, extra people to come on like uh, Chris would have done today. Yep. Um, I have a few other irons in the fire to bring other people who uh, would be interesting to listen to from the motoring world. And um, we will be down at the electric car show doing, showing every car that's there. Excellent. What we call. But yes, we will look forward to that, and we'll have brushed up on your Portuguese a bit by then as well. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll... obrigado. <laughs> Nada. So, até a próxima. Vamos embora. See you later, Colin. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow for some feel good. Ciao. Ciao. Bye for now. Ciao.